Today we're gonna to share with you 12 German life hacks. These are simple, practical things that Germans do that make life easier. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah. Hello, and I'm Kevin. We're the McFalls, a family of six with four kids. And a cat and a hamster. Mm-hmm. And we moved from the USA to Germany in February of 2021, and we've been sharing all of our adventures with you. So today we want to share with you things we have observed while living here in Germany that we would consider life hacks. I don't know if that's a big term here in Germany, but in the US, at least us moms, <laughs> get on the internet and we look for life hacks. How to we, make things easier. Yes. You know, the ones moms really like are the ones that work in the kitchen and the laundry and all that. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, do guys look up life hacks? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, are, we, we already cut corners and make things as simple as possible anyway. That's uh, in maybe. our nature, maybe. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> Germans are known for being efficient and orderly and logical. Taking and, care of business. Yeah. And obviously not every individual falls into that category, <laughs> just like in the U.S. or any other country. But we have definitely found that as a whole, Germany is more efficient and is more orderly. And we wanted to share some like totally random things you may have never heard of that are really smart. So the first one is making use of your egg cartons in interesting ways. One of them is as fire starter. Um, you know, we have a nice stove in the in the dining room and light that up all the time in the winter. And it's really great. Uh, you know, it has space inside. So it's like if you take like stack a bunch of papers on top of one another, they won't light. But you have yes. these, there's lots of air and it can get in there. You can stack, uh, you know, wood and stuff on there and it keeps it so it's not too densely packed and yeah. works really great as fire starter. Uh, another thing you can use these for is in your biotuna, in your uh, compost, compost. Uh, compost trash can, especially in the summertime. Uh, when it gets uh, all the, uh, it gets very stinky. And, and especially here, at least in our area, we are allowed to put meat in there. Not every place is allowed to put meat in there. It's weird. Um, and so they get lots of maggots and flies and all sorts of gross <gasps> stuff in there. Oh. My God. Oh my God. Oh my God. There are maggots all over this. Funny because we've seen this before. People have given us the suggestion to put these in our bio. In the YouTube comments. In the in, you guys have in the yeah. YouTube comments. Uh, and uh, what's interesting though is that I just last week got I have the app for our Gemeinde's uh, trash. And they sent me a notification about tips for how to help your biotuna in the summer. And they included that oh, they as, as a reasoning to put it in there. So it sucks up some of the moisture and dries out a little bit and makes it a little bit better for keeping the biotuna clean. The other advice that you had also suggested to me, someone had said, is to put grass clippings in there too. Yeah, and that, that's, it's like a that's separate gra um, little hack actually. Yeah. <laughs> so that's another useful one for your biotuna. And one thing I want to add is in the U.S. they still use a lot of styrofoam egg cartons. I don't know. I haven't seen those here. Do they exist? I maybe, don't know. maybe in some stores, but for the most part, you see cardboard, which is of course biodegradable <laughs> and recyclable. So good for you, Germans. And useful in your bio tuna. <laughs> yes, it's it's so. And, and Americans would use these as fire starter if they had cardboard ones, because a lot of Americans have fireplaces. So Americans would appreciate that. So, well, Americans like their electric start uh, gas log fireplaces. So yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure how many people still mess with a real fire anymore. Here in the southern Bavaria and the Alps, I don't think there's anyone who has an electric. <laughs> well, maybe in an apartment. Maybe, I don't but, know. But those who have fireplaces, I mean, they have fire, real fire, and tons of wood outside. 
but that's totally beside the point. So the second thing is, and this is gonna sound really funny to Germans, but it's awesome as Americans, is we have the toilet bowl brush right next to the toilet. <laughs> and it's like in our bathroom here at our house, it's a permanent installment. It's, yeah, it's made of porcelain. It's, yeah, it's part of the wall. <laughs> it's part of the wall. Yeah. And it's so convenient. I mean, especially for German toilets, they have that flat shelf. So, uh, Poop particles can get stuck there and it's really gross. You have to have a toilet bowl brush here in Germany. It's not as needed in the US because the toilets are designed differently. Uh, but I mean, there's definitely still times you need them in the US. So I just think it's so clever to have it right next to the toilet. And I have a bottle of toilet bowl cleaner in every bathroom. So you just go do a little squirt and a little swipe after mm -hmm. you do your business and it makes it much more pleasant for the rest of us, mm -hmm. doesn't it? For everyone in the family. Yeah, and those toilet bowl cleaners are in all of the public bathrooms. Yes, you, you find them you, in public you bathrooms. You would basically never find a toilet brush in a public bathroom in America, ever. No, oh no. No, that's the job of the janitor. The janitor is supposed to clean up after your poop. <laughs> I know, crazy, right? I mean, you should be cleaning up after yourself when it comes to poo and pee, right? That's just gross and nobody else should be touching your stuff. <laughs> So then number three is fond or deposits for bottles and cans. Now, there are some places in America that have uh, deposits, uh, but it's not all over the country and it's absolutely not at the same level uh, as here in Germany. I mean, even the bottle, the glass bottle that we got our um, whipping cream. It was a glass a whipping cream we got the other day. You know, like the old fashioned milk bottles that you get delivered to your door. My dad was actually a milkman. He delivered milk oh bottles. Gosh. One of his first job, one of his first jobs. Uh, so, oh. you know, in that way that you're, they're reusing, those ones are reusable. There's the Mierweg, which is many uses. And then there's the Einweg, which is just one use. And then they crush it down and, and, re, and remelt the plastic or the glass. Um, so yeah, fund is a big deal. You know, we have a place in our pantry to put all the bottles and we take them back to the grocery store every time we go and get a little bit of money back and help the environment a bit. And the reason why it's so smart is because you're much more likely to take back your bottles and recycle <laughs> your bottles when you get money back for them. <laughs> right. You are paying a little extra on the front end for your fund, for your deposit. You are paying a deposit, but everybody's motivated to recycle their bottles. It's a system that works beautifully yep. and is just so smart. And I know Americans would totally get on the system because money is involved. <laughs> <laughs> They're very motivated by money. And uh, yeah, I, I know the system would work in the US and I would love to see it in every grocery store across the country. It would just be great for the environment and yeah. And number four is using a coin when you get a shopping cart. Now, many Americans have already experienced this in the Aldi and Lidl stores that are across the U.S. And I remember when they came to the U.S., so many Americans were like, whoa, this is so interesting. <laughs> also annoying at first because they had to remember to bring their quarters. But once you get used to it, you know, like my mom, she loves Aldi. She goes shopping in our local town and she always keeps a quarter in her car, right? She's already a little bit Germanized in that way, <laughs> go mom. It's of course a very smart system yet again because it keeps all the shopping carts from being out in the parking lot, which in every US store that doesn't have the coin system, you do see shopping carts all throughout. Of course, there's some people that are nice and will put the carts back. And then you see them like rolling through the parking mm -hmm. lot and you can even get your car hit by a shopping cart mm -hmm. and get scratched and bumped. And I've had that happen in my cars before. It's so annoying and so frustrating. And it's, you know, it's just rude. So it, it takes care of the rude people <laughs> and keeps them from being able to damage. And it's good for the store employees because you don't see here in Germany or in France, when we lived in France, it's the same way, that you don't see employees having to push like 50 shopping carts. <laughs> in the US, employees go around the parking lots and get all of the lost shopping carts and have to put them all in this giant pile. And you see them in like 95 degree heat, like <gasps> <gasps> pushing. And I just look at them thinking, God, you're paid like eight bucks an hour to do that. You know, I'm sorry. You know, it just, it doesn't seem fair because people are rude and lazy, right? They I think part of the reason maybe in America that they do that is for the customer experience that they're high, they're paying their employees to go and collect them. And 
at least you know in most most parking lots and grocery stores in America, there's you know each row each row in the parking lot has a place to put the carts back. So of course, like Sarah said, there's some randomly spread around. The nice thing, at least from a customer experience in America, is that you don't have to walk very far from your car to put your cart back. And you know these stores can be very big, and the parking lot's very big. And、yes. so I think you know Americans probably like the fact that they. Have a place to put their cart where they don't have to walk all the way back to the front of the store from their car again, since they just walked from there. You know, from the store. As we all know, most Americans need more exercise. <laughs> they, they could use the exercise, but、that's, I think that's and that's not for people who are disabled. This has nothing to do with you. <laughs>、uh, so I think I think that's part of the、uh, reason why American stores are trying to help, you know give that service to their customers.、Yes. Um, but it just makes a lot of sense to do that yourself and take care of that. Another interesting piece is, you know, you have to always have the right coin. Here, it's a euro coin, and if you have a two euro coin or a fifty cent coin, it won't fit. Too bad, so、um, sad. And it's interesting because, you know, I went, I was at the store one time a while back, and I didn't have a coin. And I actually went up to somebody in the in the parking lot and was like, "Do you have change for my two euros?" And they're like, "No, sorry, I actually have a little plastic coin." So that's what a lot of people have, so that they they keep in their car that's not money, that's not worth anything, but the the same size plastic. And they keep it、coin. on their keychain as well. Right. And so then they'll they'll always have it. So it's、yeah. kind of cool. That's even smarter.、So、number five is that employees can actually sit down. <gasps> This is a shocking concept in the U.S. <laughs> I have seen so many employees in the U.S. pregnant women, nine months pregnant with giant bellies, looking absolutely miserable while they're standing at the cash register, ringing up people's groceries, and they look miserable because they can't sit down. I've seen elderly people, people who are injured, disabled, you know, even those who have a broken foot or broken ankle, still have to stand up on their cast.、Uh, it's terrible. And I remember when we moved to France. And that was a long time ago. That was right after we got married, which was two thousand six, and I was like in shock that employees could sit down. And I thought, this is so good. These people aren't paid very much anyway. Let the poor people sit down. They have an eight-hour shift and they can't sit down.、Mm. There's so many people with hurting hips and knees and feet and pregnant women and elderly, and you know, there's so many people that need to sit down. So I think it's. Not only practical, it's so much more humane to allow your employees to sit down. So I like that about Europe. So number six is collecting your rainwater to use and watering your garden. I know there are some people in America that do this,、yes. but it's. Pretty much everywhere here, all of our neighbors they have、mm-hmm. giant basin or can that they have underneath their storm drains, and it collects the water, and they have nice water to be able to water their plants and not have to use the water out of the tap. Yeah, I just like how you see it everywhere here, and it isn't just like the one freak in the neighborhood who is into being <laughs> eco-friendly yeah,、right. in the U.S. It's like everyone here. It's just so much more common to be eco-friendly minded here,、right. and I love that about Germany. Number seven, I think this is really cool. Germans have much more natural-looking yards, or here you would call them gardens, gardens, than Americans do. Americans are all of, manicured. Yes, it's got to look like a golf course. <laughs> yes, like you get absolutely perfect grass that does nothing for the environment, by the way, because they have to use fertilizer to keep it looking nice, which is terrible for the environment. It's terrible for children, and it's terrible for pets as well. And weed、um, killer. Weed killer, right? All the pesticides, all of the fertilizers and chemicals they have to use on their grass to keep it looking perfect is a terrible slight to the environment. And in Germany, you don't see that in people's homes. People don't have perfect looking grass. It's a bunch of weeds that you、mm, cut. Whatever grows. Right, which is what we had in the U.S. Yeah, <laughs> in our yard.、Uh, but people kind of let their flowers be a little wild, and their bushes. Things aren't at least where we live. It's not perfectly manicured, and. It really takes the pressure off that I have to have a perfect-looking yard. Like in the U.S., there's neighborhoods that, with neighborhood associations, yeah, that, everything、uh, is regulated. And if you have too many weeds or it doesn't look nice, you can get fined and all this stuff. Yeah. Yes. It's crazy. Yeah, some neighborhoods can be very, very strict. Ella, I'm in. My, we're in our room recording a video. Many, many minutes later.
Yeah, so it's just nice here how you can have a more natural looking yard and not feel the pressure to make it perfect. It's better for the environment. I like looking out in the yard and seeing the little flowers that grow instead of perfect green grass. I mean, perfect green grass, it is pretty. I'm not going to say it's ugly or anything. And it does feel good on your feet. It almost feels <laughs> like a carpet. Yes. So I understand the appeal. You know, that was 20 years ago when we didn't know how damaging it was to the environment. Mm -hmm. And now that's just not good anymore. And we shouldn't be damaging the water supply and getting chemicals into our children's feet and pets and anyone who's playing in the yard. It's just not safe and healthy anymore. So your neighbors, they have their lawn treatment. The, they put these little signs, they put little signs in the yard like, you know, pets don't walk in here for like the next week or something like that. Yes. You know, that you can't have, you can't have any living creature walk across the lawn because it's so dangerous. And how are you going to keep worms <laughs> and snakes and mice and right. groundhogs and birds? Out of your perfect line yeah. you're not so it's terrible yeah so uh, i just like having a more natural lawn here so number eight is that you have two comforters on your bed two duvets instead of one for a couple obviously we all know that if you have one duvet you fight over it and do we fight over our she, duvet she's the stealer oh he is <laughs> no. you take it no you are not definitely not <laughs> And we still have uh, our two youngest children will still occasionally get in the bed with us at night when there's a you know big thunderstorm or they're sick and they'll get in bed with us. And then it's even worse because there's three of us fighting over that comforter. And Germans, I know this is crazy that we haven't gotten two duvets for our bed yet. And that's because when we first moved here, which was only a year and a half ago, I bought everything through Ikea and I wasn't Germanized yet because I hadn't been we here very it long. before we came. We, we bought it before bought it online I moved here. Before we got here, yeah. Yeah. And when we got here, it was already here. So um, now I'm like, oh my gosh, why didn't I get two, two duvets? It's so much smarter. <laughs> And I can imagine it solves a lot of marital problems, <laughs> having your own duvet. You can't fight in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, do I get to pick out the design of mine? Am I allowed to have like a Star Wars one or oh, something? <laughs> no. See, I'm still going to have to... It's got to be pretty. I'm still going to have to choose one that goes with the color scheme. So it's really not, uh, it's not completely egalitarian. You know that the wife chooses that <laughs> stuff, right? Okay. Everyone knows. Yes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the number nine is one that a lot of people talk about, but we just have to include in here, and that is the German engineered windows, okay? Where you can open them straight up, you can tilt them, uh, tilt them forward to let some air flow in, the whole luft and that, that whole thing is a whole, whole nother story, but it's really great. Um, you know, to be able to get in and wash even the back side of the window. It's, you know, an Amer so American easy. windows are much harder oh, to get in and, and yes. wash them. Uh, so that's really They're great. so hard to wash in the U.S. Unless you have brand new windows from the past couple of years. And one of the things I would like to get you guys advice on is we okay. have many glass doors in our house that are the same way. And you think that's awesome. We got these doors and everything. But there's so much more traffic that goes through doors. And there's the little people that are the kids that are trying to open them. And, you know, they don't ever pull them straight out. You know, they're short, so they're pulling them down. And that tends to try and pull it to, to lean out. And so mm -hmm. actually a lot of our doors are sort of sticking and, the, and the, the parts are not working. All the moving parts aren't working very well. So I found that it doesn't, it seems to damage the door using it so many times mm -hmm. uh, with all of that functionality. So are there ways I can keep that from happening? Are there ways that I can oil it or fix it? Some of the parts even seem to be bent. So if you have any life hacks on how to fix uh, or, or maintain my doors that have that functionality, I'd really appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure we'll get lots of good comments. I am sure as we, we will. always do. <laughs> yes. From smart and practical Germans. And number 10 goes along with 11 and it is the Luften. And yes, this can be a whole video by itself. But since Germans don't have AC, they have just gotten really smart when it comes to keeping their houses cool in the summer. Last year, I don't know, we weren't really getting it quite yet. Didn't really understand how to keep the house cool. This year, we're doing so much better, you guys. <laughs> So for our, like our boys' room, they get the afternoon sun on the back side of the house. So I put thermal blackout curtains in their room. And now I've learned that I need to close those in the afternoon when the sun is so hot. And that has kept the rooms much cooler so that when they go to sleep at night, it's not so hot. And this is a tip that even Americans can use. You can use this with AC. And you're gonna find that your house isn't having to run as much AC. You're gonna be saving money 
and you'll be saving your environment. So it's two good things at once. But for those who don't have AC, this is essential. And also we do the Luften where we open windows that can have a cross breeze going through. I mean, growing up, my parents were very practical and they didn't like to use the AC in the summer, even though it was brutally hot, but they were always trying to save money. And now looking back, I appreciate what they were doing, uh, but they always had Luften going on and you could feel the breeze blowing through the house. It was, it was so pleasant. And you, you feel like you're part of the outside. Yes. You're not disconnected from the outside. Yes. In the U.S., when you're it's inside, like so sanitized. It's, it is. It's so sanitized. Yeah. <laughs> you're so disconnected from the outside. And here, I feel like I live like in, in nature the trees. Almost. Yeah. yeah. Upstairs, you live in the trees. Downstairs, you live in the garden. <laughs> and you just feel the breeze blow, blow through the house. You can hear the birds chirping. Like right now, we can hear the birds chirping. And I'll show you our view here. It's really beautiful. Of course, you do have to fight the flies and the insects. So that's you do, a, and that's, that's annoying. <laughs> that's one of the drawbacks. Very but. annoying. You can yeah. get screens for your windows, but it's annoying. Not, yeah. Anyway, Luften is fantastic. Very smart. Very energy efficient. It works. So number 11 is something we just recently experienced with Ella, and that's teaching your children to ride a bicycle using a balance bike. And no training wheels. And no training wheels. In the U.S., you use training wheels on the bicycle. And actually, in other countries, too, our Ukrainian family we had staying with us, they bought their daughter that kind of bicycle. Yeah. And they kept wondering why Ella was using a balance bike. And they're like, why don't why don't I put training wheels on that for her so she can uh, use training wheels? And, and uh, the language barrier was so strong, I was not able to really explain to them. In Germany, you don't use training wheels. You use a balance bike. But in the U.S., I want to give a short story. With our boys, when our oldest Gabriel was six and Grayson, our middle son, was four, they neither one of them were riding a bicycle yet without training wheels. And I was starting to get a little worried about Gabriel because he was six and he couldn't ride a bicycle yet. I already knew about balance bikes and I was like, we've got to get these boys on balance bikes. So we bought a balance bike and we knew they were like a European, like a cool European thing, right? <laughs> and we got them balance bikes. They rode on the balance bike, I think, for like a week. Yeah. And by the next week, they were going up and down a giant hill in our neighborhood on their bicycles with no training wheels. Yeah. And I was like, okay, these things work. This yeah. thing is awesome. <laughs> totally Balance bikes are the best. <laughs> yep. And Ella didn't use it all that long either. I mean, well, we bought it last year when we were here last summer when we moved here. And she didn't actually use the balance bike all yeah, that she much. Yeah, that was boring. She but didn't she, want to. but this year she wanted to ride a regular bike, and you're like, well, why don't you practice a little bit with this one? And she practiced a little bit and got got her balance and didn't have that crutch of the training wheels and transitioned onto the regular bike in like a day. It yes. was unbelievably quick. So yeah, it's you oh don't need gosh. that. You don't need that crutch. It just holds you back and prevents you from learning to ride a bike when you can, when you're able. And so many kids ride bicycles here. So Ella had a lot of motivation by seeing <laughs> all her friends that were riding to kindergarten on their bicycles with no training wheels. Yeah. And so that gave her a lot of motivation. And she is a girl who likes a challenge. So she was like, I'm not letting these kids have one up on me. So she learned how to ride a bike very quickly. And now she is riding up and down these giant hills mm -hmm. all around in our town. Um, she's great. able to ride her bicycle now to kindergarten, which fills her with such pride. Yes. You should see the look on her face. She's <laughs> so happy and proud of herself. Mm -hmm. So then number 12 is reusable produce bags, okay? Instead of getting the plastic, or they do sometimes have paper, uh, so you can use paper as a little better than plastic, um, but these reusable um, vegetable and fruit bags. So instead of using something that you have to throw away uh, or recycle, you have something that you can reuse. And I didn't even know about these. <laughs> until I posted a video of our grocery store hauls for a week and we got so many comments like, what are you doing with plastic You're bags? You're using plastic produce bags. No, please use reusable ones. So I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even, honestly didn't even know they existed because right. that's not on the radar of most <laughs> Americans. Shame on us. Um, so yeah, I bought them on Amazon and if they get dirty and, you know, get fruit goo on them, you can just throw them in the washing machine. So very efficient. So I said at the beginning of the video, there's only 12, but I just thought of another one because you guys are so smart. <laughs> so number 13 is a Veshespina, which is a washing spider. <laughs> <laughs> and in the US, we mostly have just a closed line with like two poles that are kind of like a cross. And those work pretty well. There's uh, sometimes they're a double line. Those work great for sheets and towels and things. 
Uh, nothing wrong with that. But when we came here, you know, people have smaller yards. You don't really have space sometimes to have a washing line. So a spinna makes so much more sense because it's smaller and very efficient. You know, you have maybe six strings you can hang and it's just, you can hang a bunch of stuff on there at once. And of course, things dry so fast in the sun. They dry faster in the sun on a warm day than they do in the dryer. <laughs> and that's so energy efficient and good for the environment. And everything comes out smelling glorious. There's nothing better than sheets that have dried in the sun. I love when I've dried our sheets in the sun, come back and put them on the bed and I get in bed that night. It's like, oh, heaven, it smells so good. I love my Vesha spinna. Kevin dug a hole in the ground for me. And I have to tell him to put it up now every... Kevin, please put up the Vesha spinna for me, please. <laughs> it's too big. Spring. I can't carry it. Yeah, put it away in the winter. Take it out in the spring. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll think of other things now that this video is over. But those are the big main things that we use on a regular basis and do on a regular basis. So Germans, if you have more life hacks, we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Leave them below. Or if you're from another country and you have a life hack you want to share with us, we would love to get a collection of more. And yeah, so we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Cheers. So I said there were 12, but I just thought of a 13th one because Germans are so smart. Number 13 is the... The wash spider. Yeah. And how do we say that in German? Wäsche <laughs> spindeln. Spindeln? Isn't it? No, oh, that's just spinna. 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 spinna, I think. The washer spinna. Isn't it, isn't it an umlaut? I mean, isn't it a, yeah, it's an umlaut. Oh, gosh. It's that's just spinna, I think. You are correct. Vesche so we are both spinna. correct. We're both correct. Okay. <laughs>